five minutes later. And here, with his bird's eye view and a brain to match, is Mr. Know-it-all. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fester, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's that day of the week, down to the hour, minute, and second. That we come together as a community to relish in the words of David Grush as we go ahead and start talking about those things that our government doesn't want us to, and talking about those things, you know, from science fiction and yes, we're also talking about those things, of course, from the X-Files. What things are we talking about, friends? We're talking about the things that you can go out and see over your house in the evening, but you just need to go outside and look up. We're talking about good old-fashioned UFOs on here on Disclosure tonight. We still call them that for a good reason. Why? Because there's a word for it in every single language around the world throughout perpetuity. Who in the heck knew? So as our federal government continues their 75-year war against the extraterrestrial presence, how do we know? Oh, just take a look, friends. It's all a military operation, whether it's the Navy chasing them through the air and under the sea, or it's the Air Force chasing them through the air to figure out where they're crashed, to pull out the survivors, to go ahead and test their DNA against our junk DNA, to, and to use our tech, their technology for our weapons of mass destruction. That's why we come together in Disclosure tonight, many nights a week, to bring you the latest news, the latest information, and tonight is like no other. Our friend David Grush is back. He has dropped more information than we've heard before, and he's hit the most popular podcast in the world. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Joe Rogan, my friends. That's why we're not going to listen to the idiots in the White House or the bozos in the DOD who work for those idiots in the White House. That's why we come together with myself, Thomas Fessler, all of our friends in the back, and everyone in the chat for yet another episode of Disclosure Tonight. Good evening, everybody. How the heck you doing? A little hiccup, Sarah, uh, getting the show started, but you know, that's okay. On that note, getting things started, I want to go ahead before I start up here and I want to go ahead and thank. I want to go ahead and thank. There it is. Mr. Wildcat Mahone throwing out a $20 super chat to start off Disclosure tonight. Remember, friends, what a great way to support Disclosure tonight because every dollar that comes into Disclosure tonight goes back into the production of the show. We are so humbled and thankful for everyone's love and support of Disclosure tonight, and especially David uh, to Wildcat Mahone for starting off tonight's episode with a super chat. How about that? On that note, let's go ahead and take a look and see who we have out in the chat right now. Let me bring this around and see who are the people, the participants out in the chat as the audience grows. Let's see who's out there. We have Ann Joanne. Ant-Man's here. Let me kick off the music there and spark up the drums. There we go. And Joanne's here. Ant-Man's here, along with Brendan England. Champa's around, along with Crispy. Good to see you, Chris, my friend. Who else do we have out there? Well, let's take a look. We've got Christy Lynn, Dr. Tim Taylor. Eddie's here, along with Eli McGinnis. Evan B's around, along with Firefly Glow Watcher. J-Cat also stopped in, along with Kelly Barrett with her piercing blue eyes. Good to see you, Kelly. Lady D's here along with Little. Marcus Mandel, the original Mr. Good Looking, is here. Good to see you, Marcus. Mr. Catfish, 2100, better known as Yerp or Yerp Yerp. Good to see you, my friend. Neil Morgan's here along with Niles Guy. Good to see you, Niles. Paul DeMond made it in. See you call him Paul DeMond enough times. The name gets updated. There you go. Ravenous Ryan is here. Uh, well, he was here, but <laughs> he disappeared. But Rick Neal is here, not... Rick, 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 Neil, Rick, or Rick Real. Um, good to see you, my friend. RJ is here along with our Ryan Baker. Sergi Cardio just made it here along with Shelly Montgomery. Good to see you, Shelly. Thanks for stopping in last night. TK is around and also Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. He's working. No, he's off work, but he stopped by earlier. He'll be back on Saturday. What a great show. What a great opportunity to go ahead and talk about David Grush's interview. I've got a lot of little clips uh, cash for tonight. It's going to be a great conversation. Talking about a great conversation 
It's that time of the night, friends, to go ahead and welcome in the people in our back. Let's go ahead and see who we have out there first. Who's the last person to talk to me who's up on the big board right now? Let me go ahead and take a look. Well, would you look at that? It's Tia Loreno. Good to see you, Tia. How you doing, my dear lady? Why, hello, Thomas. It's nice to see you. Yeah. Did you have I, a good time uh, last night? Few shows. That was a hot show. Holy cow. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and watch them. Yeah. Thanks for coming so, in as well. It was nice. It's nice seeing you and the dogs. Yeah. And this ahead. is going to be an interesting show, I must say. David Grush, I thought he was um, I thought he was relaxed and, and, and said a lot more on this one than I think I've ever heard him say. Yeah, he said Personally. a bunch. Yeah, I've got a bunch of clips that have cashed up from our friends over at uh, UFO Ooh. Twitter. It's a little bit easy to pull stuff in sometimes. Go ahead and let other people do the work for you sometimes. We'll talk about it. Who else do we have in the back? But thank you for coming in again, Tia. Who else do we have in the back? It's none other than Nunya Business, also known as... Susan Ford. How are you doing, Susan? I'm doing really well, Thomas. Looking forward to hearing this. This is, sounds good. Oh, you better believe it, my dear lady. And thanks for coming in, my friend. Have you got done sealing your your pictures yet? I just started painting another painting. So yeah, I need to seal. I need to seal. You're right. You need slap, to seal. Slap. Prioritize, my dear lady. You love to paint, but it sounds like you need a sealer. I, I'm, I'm gonna go and slap myself with some rosemary beads right now. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, also in the back, we've got the one, the only Brian Pemble. How's it going, Brian? Oh, it's going great. What a spectacular day! And and I just want to say one thing: there's been a lot of American heroes, and David Grush deserves his place among those honor people. What yeah. a spectacular interview! Spectacular guy. We owe him a huge debt of gratitude. You know, we could call him the greatest American hero, but I think that title is already already taken. Uh, yes, yes, I know it is. But, uh, it, you know, this guy may have done more than anybody to advance this. Uh, I know there's been people along the way, but, but boy, what a special, special person. I know, isn't it? Absolutely. Would you look at that? We got another super chat coming in for someone who just jumped in the back. Ali Alvian. Holy cow, $100 uh, SEK Kroners. Sweden Kroners. Thank you very much, uh, Ollie, for that wonderful super chat. I'll call you out in a second. Who else we have in the back? Would you look at that? We've got LM, also known as Lee. Lee, how the hell are you? No, oh, it's been a crazy day, huh? Wild. Looking forward to it. Oh, I know it's been a it, it's been a crazy one, but you know what? I actually we just finished. Well, I just finished watching this broadcast in the last couple minutes right before the show started, but I had to put it at one point three times just to get through it. You work a long day, and people like are like Thomas. Look at the video that's out there from David Grush. Like, like I know I already saw it on, on X, but you know what? Formerly known as Twitter. It was a good one. A lot of things we didn't uh, anticipate. Led Dave says, let's go. You better believe it, my friend. Let's get on then with the people in the back. We also have Michael Suckloff. Or Suckloff. How you doing, uh, Michael? I'm doing good, Thomas. It's going to be a good show tonight. Yeah. Fingers Story. crossed on Go ahead. It would be historic. I, you know, it was a historic interview, my friend, and I can't wait to see where it's going to go. Would you look at that? Another super chat came in. Fat Frank. Another uh, Kroner uh, super chat coming in from our friends in Sweden. Who would have known that we have so many great friends in Sweden? My goodness. Thank you very much, Frank. Also in the back, we've got Nick. Nick, how you doing, my friend? I promise I won't bite. <laughs> Unless you want me to. He's unmuted, but he's not saying anything. Also in the back from our friend from Sweden, we have Ali Alvian. How you doing, Ali? I'm great, Thomas. And uh, it's nice to be uh, with you all here. And I think uh, the just, uh, yesterday's discussion you had was fantastic. And I'm <laughs> sure this one about Grutch will be as well. Oh, I hope so. I hope There's so many good things. It's like, where do we start? But I'll, yeah. I've, I've got it all cashed on Twitter bookmarks for this part. We'll get to it. But thank you for coming in today, Ollie. Hope your wings aren't tired from flopping and all the way from uh, Sweden. But uh, great to have you around. Also in the back, we've got Patrick Fogarty. Patrick, long time Hello. no see, my friend. It's good to be seen. It's good to be back, guys. Uh, 
I, a lot of exciting stuff. I had to come back for this tonight. I had to fight off the jet lag, but I think I'm going to be back for a while. I, I, I got the feeling that I'm going to be here for a bit now. But uh, hey, it was great. And I rewatched yesterday's show. It was great to see all my friends back and see Wes back. I'm hoping he makes an appearance tonight at some point. But uh, yeah, I missed all you guys. So let's kick it off for another great show, Thomas. This yes. is going to be a kick ass show. Thank you very much, Patrick. Also, another super chat just came in from Magellan saying, Our feet are in the door. We be is meaning we be here before you. We be here after you. Can't stop us now. But it sounds like there are some people in Washington, D.C. who will be covering that are two mics, not our mic disclosure, but some other mics who are working hard to, to break this down and keep the, to put the toothpaste back in the tube. And this round this up with our good friend who wasn't here yesterday, Harold. How could he have missed yesterday's show, my friend? Holy cow. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm bad. I'm bad. I've just had a lot of issues here with this painting and stuff, man. I still got half my place tore apart. But I tuned in tonight, though. It looks good. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming around, my friend. It's going to be a good one to say the absolute least. On that note, as we were, uh, led Dave told us this a minute ago, let's go. Let's go ahead and go now. If I can go ahead and see, let's stop that music. And I need to go to my bookmarks. I had just taken one of the good ones here that basically, um, what are we talking about today? Let me go ahead and bring this back again. We're talking about David Grush being on the Joe Rog Rogan podcast. Remember, Joe Rogan podcast is the most popular podcast in the world. Not even Lou Elizondo has gone on to Joe Rogan, although we try to push him many times to go on there. There has never been a better time for more UFO whistleblowers to come forward because at this point, disclosure, thanks to David, is becoming mainstream. So many good things to talk about in this conversation. Eli McGinnis just threw us another super chat. This 499 American, thank you very much, Eli, for that wonderful super chat. Holy cow, the support pours in. We were so humbled and thankful for everyone's support of disclosure tonight. On that note, where do we start? Where do we start? Oh, there are so many good things that were said. There's so many good things that I have cashed here. Um, well, if you want to call it, have a catching up on last night's show where we were going ahead and talking about um if you want to call it disclosure catastrophic disclosure for that matter we've got david grush talking about uncontrolled disclosure which would be catastrophic disclosure maybe non-human intelligence initiated now this is something that i've been saying on this channel for a while if our government is unwilling to go ahead and bring forward the truth i've been saying that i think we've got a better chance of getting the truth from the non-human intelligence because of the cover-up, the deep cover-up that's been going on for our government for so long. Let's go ahead and get this clip up right now. Let me get to the desktop TV. All right, it's a little bit lower resolution. The video is, well, it's supposed to be flipped, but it's not. Give me a second to go ahead and fix that. No, I don't want the fair use. I need to find my camera. No, not that one. No, not that one. I know it's here. Give me a second, friends. I'll go ahead and find this one. Where is it at? I thought I had it. There we go. Transform. Flip horizontal. There you go. Although the text is backwards, it'll go away in a second. Let's go ahead and play this little clip. Oh, my gosh. Holy cow. Would you look at that? Cosmo Fang is coming back in. Welcome to the show, Cosmo. Good to have you here, my friend. Uh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm just ha so happy this is happening. I've been calling for this for a while, so I'm glad to see it happen. So am I. Let's go ahead and play this first clip of David Grush talking about uncontrolled disclosure, maybe NHI initiated. Also advising, he's also advising the government on UAP currently. And just as we thought he was done, he's not. Anyways, let me go ahead and take one more thing here. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's play this. Here we go. Uh, but really, if the U.S. government doesn't get their uh, house in order here, I mean, you could have uh, uncontrolled disclosure events such that either maybe the non-human intelligence is like, yeah, let's do it. Or what if one of our 
adversaries decides to disclose and they become the messiah figure on this and we lose sovereignty or national supremacy in, in that regard from an open and honest civil society perspective. So I but I think the governments were getting close, I think, um, as we're long as we're closer than yeah, we've ever been yeah, before. Yeah. Just to- what are your thoughts on this, Lee? Or Brian, go ahead. You know, this show is way ahead of everybody else. We're, I mean, just like you said, Thomas, we're just talking about any adversary disclosing uh, the UFO topic yesterday with Mr. Rick Doty. I mean, it's always ahead of the curve here. I love it. Absolutely. You know, and if, if it is that situation, I guess we're either going to go ahead and take the forefront, but what, ha- what does happen if someone like China or Russia come out and talk about this first. It puts us in the passenger seat versus the driver's seat. So while there has been a concern about bringing the truth about disclosure forward, it's a two-sided coin. There's two sides of potential uh, danger of not to or to bring out the truth, but I think we're getting closer and closer to bring out the truth. Let me play out the rest of this clip that they brought you in to have these conversations. Yeah, no, I'm I'm still advising the US government on this and 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 I'm trying to carefully message this, put all the broad things on the table and I'm not trying to be coy, I'm not trying to be conceal anything, but it's like there's real national security and collateral damage uh with just releasing this willy-nilly and I'm just trying to get the government to get a plan together here. And, and just be open and honest with the people of the world, really. So, And there's still the bottleneck with these military contractors that allegedly have access to these things. Yeah, and like to, to those guys, and I know some of them, um, and the, the individuals that hold the keys, like this is a boon. Like this is don't look at it like um, you're going to lose money. You This is a recruiting opportunity. Yes, you're going to have to let other people in the cookie jar. That's how a fair and free society works. Now, about who who David was just mentioning, that yes, uh, he did bring out and say, let me get back to this one. Oh, here we go. Um, desk chat, all right. The, coming down to this, David actually brought out and, and identified that Lockheed Martin is in the possession of um, material from a crash craft. And apparently part of the OSAP program that was out there uh, uh, that was headed up by James Lukatsky in the past from the DOD, on the other side of the fence, it was uh, Robert Bigelow from Bigelow Aerospace. And they worked together as a team to try and bring it out. And part of this, along with Harry Reid, what they tried to do was to get that secret compartmentalized above a bigot list kind of a program put together because... Back when OSAP was going on, Lockheed Martin wanted to divest themselves of the material because due to the restrictions that the government has in play that are so narrowing, so restrictive, that it was very difficult, A, to get the right people to come out of the program because you would get people who would be really great scientists, but they're going to say, hey, we've got this great program for you to work on. But you're going to go down a rabbit hole. You're not going to be able to publish any papers. You're not going to be able to report on anything. And it's going to be a dark place. It could be a dead end for your career working on something that you can never figure out. So going down that particular rabbit hole, again, Lockheed Martin wanted to give it back to the federal government. But who was Lockheed Martin working with? None other than the CIA. And the CIA pushed back as many ways as they possibly could to prevent OSAF from getting that special compartmentalized program with a bigot list, meaning that unless you're on the list, you cannot be read into this to keep it even more secret. And probably still through till today, Lockheed Martin is still sitting on this material that they can not figure out. And more importantly, they want to get the hell out of their labs because it's more of a liability form than anything. Anything from you, Lee, on this one? Yeah, I mean, the CIA seems to be a very large gatekeeper and obfuscator in this process, no doubt. 
and uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. And uh, it's always been amazing. I mean, that's something that several other people brought up uh, that the CIA, the OSUD, o o U o OUSDI and lots of other uh, agencies have been involved in uh, sequestering this and keeping people from being able to work on it and uh, keeping us out of the know. Yeah, and I, but I think this is the first time we've actually heard a three-letter agency outside of the DOD implicated and being part of the cover-up. Now, we thought we, we've had suspicion on this, and we've heard mention that there are three-letter intelligence agencies, but no one has been pointed out until this point, so that's a groundbreaking piece. Patrick? Yeah, I kind of disagree with that one part, Thomas, though, because we did know um, all of our espionage uh, planes and spy planes were developed specifically through the CIA. Right. It yeah. wasn't until we had um, the Air Force taking control of some of those materials directly with Lockheed, and that wasn't when they were Lockheed Martin. That was when they were Lockheed Grumman. So we have to look at what happened. <laughs> in the early 1970s, there was a huge rift in the um, – uh, military industrial complex where we saw a huge shakeup of these companies and that's when you saw a consolidation of a lot of them you can kind of tell who got the the magic parts and who didn't because grumman ended up being the maker of like janitorial products you, you can see what lockheed did with them uh i'm not necessarily completely convinced that lockheed was the only one with it seeing how it's lockheed martin martin also came to the table with something now i know we didn't get to it in this interview but he mentions part of it where he says he he, he he put his foot in the trap, as you had said. He mentions Lockheed Martin. Uh, he mentions um, a few other uh, defense contractors. And then when he was asked, well, where did the recovered craft go? Oh, I can't tell you that. We already know. It was already there. It's It's got to be one of the three he mentioned. So I just wanted to add that. We did know about the CIA previously. Well, we knew about them, but not necessarily. They were going ahead and pre they were involved with Lockheed. And they were men black. <laughs> Well, actually, Men in Black is probably tied more to Monsanto Corporation than it is tied to the CIA, at least what we've heard from our sources. Could be. Absolutely. Or they're all one and the same. Yeah, potentially one and the other, but we'll figure that out as time goes on. Now, if I've got another clip here I want to go ahead and bring out, let's go ahead and bring this. This is David Grush basically coming out and bluntly saying, until what we've had coming with the Schumer Amendment, that the federal government has never had a disclosure plan. Go figure. That would explain what's going on. So let me get to this desktop TV here. Let's go ahead and play this clip, and let's see what David has to say here. But there's never been a disclosure plan. I always ask that, like, to these super senior people I've talked to. Was there a plan? Any kind of plan at all? And they're like, no, never. We tried to muddy the waters back and there, nah. you know, tried to put it out there and test the populace. But, um, you know, there was never any cogent plan. I mean, people think the government is like this fine oiled machine. They have plans for everything. Well, I guess sort of, but like it's not. I mean, but there's never been a disclosure. So are you surprised, uh, Patrick? Not in the least, not in the least. And and I think he kind of pointed something out there where he said they tested the waters. Uh, that's a question that I'm kind of disappointed that Joe Rogan didn't ask um, that we've been saying for a while. When they test the waters, is it through the disclosure in movies where they, they add uh, subtext to a movie? Uh, that's a question I'd like to add. If, if we ever get a sit down, there we go. That's all. Oh, so you're talking about the soft disclosure that's been ten potentially coming on as the three-letter agencies or different areas, whether it's military or intelligence, has been going out and, if you want to call it, seeding us with information with regards to... Uh, I would say more uh, they're, they're, they're controlling the rudder of the ship. I wouldn't say necessarily seeding because while they're not the, the, the forerunner and they're not the power behind it, they can certainly correct the direction of it. Um, I, I think some stuff came out where they had to get on top of it. And I think that's kind of what he alludes to here is that uh, so many things have happened um, where – they decided, okay, our best response is to cover it up again, to, to shut it down. Uh, but they were very close in multiple instances where they had to regroup multiple uh, uh, defense contractors. They had to move a lot of stuff into the country, back out of the country. He mentions that he can't discuss that, but that's what brought up the Mussolini UFO. So I think that there's, there, there's he, he, he says a lot without saying much at all. Yeah, he does. Unlike me. 
<laughs> Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Uh, your humor and candor on that one. Also, taking a look at our next clip that we've got coming up, David Grush says, according to the folks that handle the, uh, the analysis of biologics, there are, there are a variety of beings and a certain number that the U.S. knows about. Senior, quote, senior people, end quote, who work for members of Congress were briefed on these different types of entities. Different types, my friends. I'm not sure if we're talking about the tarantuloids, the giant spiders or other ones, who knows what they are. The grays, the tall whites, we'll figure out what it is. But let's go ahead and listen to this little clip here of David Grush talking about just that. Here we go. Let's jump into this and uh, let's get this clip and, queued up. And all right, here so we go. When it, so when it comes to these, um, I'm going to bring it back to these these actual entities. Yeah. Do we know... Or would you have an understanding of how many of them we're talking about and the variety of them? Well, yeah, there is a variety, and we have a certain number of of different things. Um, mm -hmm. But the, like, total numbers of, like, what's interacting with us on Earth, I mean, nobody knows that. And, I mean, uh, that, But there's an understanding yeah. of some that they do believe are interacting with us, and there's a variety mm -hmm. in terms of there's, there's variables. Yeah, I, I talked to people who are familiar with... Uh, the biological analysis and everything. So we have some idea, not a complete picture, because it's like, you know, you know, you're looking at it, it's like, well, I don't even understand the physio physiology at all. It's like, what the heck? It's like way different, right? So um, we Is have there at least a description a, of this physiology. No, can't get into that top secret, but there you go. There's part of it. Just to go ahead and Hollywood saying in the chat, Thomas, you need to address that reverse screen issue. The screen is flipped to deal with copyright issues. That's why we, it's a little bit lower res. We have the fair use title, top and bottom of it. And we were looking at it through the old television set as well. Does that make sense, Patrick? So there you go. We've got multiple entities, multiple types of entities, not just talking about what they look like on the outside, but they have different physiology going on the inside let's continue with this clip yeah no i was in i was in the room when uh, uh i be careful i don't want to uh, i was in washington dc with a very uh number of senior people that work for <laughs> that was a good one he's like ah no I was in Washington, D.C. There's a good one. He's, yes, that's right, Mr. Catfish 2100. He does not want to wind up in prison. And that's why you see some people who are out there with Greer, and they talk and they talk and they talk about so many things that are going on. And as soon as you hear it, you know it's BS, because when someone is watching what they have to say, because it's so classified, they're doing it to protect themselves from getting a knock on the door, opening the door, getting people rushing in, putting a hood on them, and pulling them off and never seeing them again. Uh-oh, looks like Patrick's got some people at his door now. Members of Congress, put it that way, um, when I was still in government. And I brought the people who worked on that stuff to the Hill. I mean, this is why the members were so confident to put out the Schumer Amendment and stuff. And I, and I was like, please explain. And... Um, they went into all those details and stuff. And I remember, you know, uh, some, some of the professional staff members were like, whoa, like, like they were like in G lock. Right. Cause I mean, it like a total world bubble, um, it got burst right there for a lot of people. And so we, we have some idea. It's not a complete picture. I mean, it's just like, but you're not even bringing in the right, the right people. Like I think about my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Gary Nolan, which I started the, um, Soul Foundation nonprofit with, I mean, he's like, you know, Nobel level biologist, virologist, like he's the guy that you would want on it, but he's not on it. So I think we can make a lot of progress in our understanding once again, if, if this is more broadly studied um, in an open environment. Yeah. Interesting to say the least. Now, one of the things, uh, your thoughts, Patrick? It's, I, I I don't have any other than yeah. I think he hit the nail on the head. Where do yeah. you want to see this show up? Because he said that, you know, we could give it out to colleges. But uh, honestly, 
I think it's one of those situations where we have to give it all or nothing at all yeah. because as soon as that dam starts to trickle a little bit, every adversary is going to release what they have. Everyone yeah. wants to be ahead on it. Yeah. Now, no one, one of the has, there's going to Go there's ahead. going to come a point where you can't say, "Oh, I don't believe in it." No, they're going to come out and say, "Okay, secrets out of the bag." Um, but I want to know what we've gleaned from it so far. I mean, he steps he steps right past that. Oh, I can't talk about that. If it's in public purview and we're using it, wouldn't it be fair for us to at least know that? Anyway, so yeah, interesting piece to say the absolute least. Now, David Worski was bringing up the point of religion and something that came up at the end of the Joe uh, Rogan interview that Joe brought up and that David actually agreed with it was interesting to say the least that if you look at the human's uh, view of religion, it doesn't fit into the scope of the universe. So that we have a uh, we have a major realignment that's going to be heading our way as time moves on, Patrick. He said something that Xi Jinping said that we haven't heard too frequently. We've heard 2027, we've heard 2024. He used a number, uh, 2030. And he also used a chart at the Seoul Foundation that kind of alluded to that date, too. Well, 2027 is 2030. The date that they have for 2030 is actually when the time runs out for full disclosure to be coming as per the Schumer Amendment. But what we're talking about in 2027, apparently there is a big event that's heading our way that um, has been alluded to by, of course, John Ramirez and others. And it ties into a one of the dates that they have coming from the Soul Foundation that was presented by Colonel Carl Nell, retired. So Correct. So, and that's what I wanted to hit on. So he had said two things that were contradictory to them. There was a date set under the Schumer uh, uh, protocols of 2030. We know of 2027. I mean, that's been the rumble for a while. And if we're, if you're looking at our batting average, we're batting a 980 right now, man. Uh, if you listen to this interview, we're pretty spot on with a lot of stuff. So whatever's going to come in 2027 is going to abolish whatever's going to be after that. They need to get on the ball. And I think the reason that he ended up on Rogan, he could have gone anywhere. And he's been a quiet guy up to this point. I think it's that there's something big coming. I think it's going to be pretty damn quick. With him saying that we have to get in control of it before the, the ball rolls down the hill on its own, I think that that's basically what we're going to be looking at coming into uh, this coming December into January. Yeah, I, I hope so. And, you know, you know, talking about that, I could fast forward to, oh, let's see if I can find this, one of the segments we have on here. Um, well, talking about getting... Now, you have to rem remember, NDAA, actually, Harold, I'll let you go first before we jump into this next segment. Go ahead, re reality check. I was just going to say, I've seen something on uh, a show yesterday or the day before, and it was about time travelers, supposedly. And one of the guys said, disclosure is supposed to be 2028 from the future, if that means anything. Yeah, I, we heard it's supposed to be around... Uh... Was it end of this end of 2026, beginning of 2027, or end of 27, 27, beginning of 2028, somewhere around there? Either way, it's not just disclosure, it's, it's when there's going to be a major push forward by the non human intelligence, at least. That's what the collective is kind of saying right now. If I can jump into this right now, um, one of the issues, Ali, go ahead. Ali Ali Oxenfree. Yeah, yeah that's now. Well, I just want to comment on on um, on this disclosure policy now that they are trying to uh, uh, to set out. Uh, and I worked as a policy advisor and analyst in different areas. And I see here the the most important point now, if you want to be proactive as a government on disclosure. The biggest risk that they have now that they can't control, this is what you discussed uh, yesterday, if someone else admits or make, uh, uh, make what, uh, like a proof that we are in possession of non-human material and, and biologicals, then the, the government uh, uh, and the DOD, they will immediately lose the initiative so for me, as an advisor to the government, I would say you have to start with, and if you have a, want to have control over the conversation, 
you have to make the general admitment that we, yes, have things, both the physical and the biological, um, uh, better crafts and so on, and then describe why you haven't disclosed this yet, but just tell the public, yes, we have things and we're working out a plan how to make this um, available and get this information to you. But it's going to take time because of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and they have the initiative, and they don't have have to stand like like idiots, Baghdad bulbs no more. Just that admission will release a lot of pressure and uh, problems for the DUD and everyone involved. But let the public know: if you don't, you're going to lose, and you are not. You don't have uh, have the capacity or the uh, uh, the, the mandate to hide this anymore. anymore. You have to realize that's where you are now. Just handle it. Yep. Cosmo? That was my take. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Ali. Absolutely. Cosmo, do you have something to say in reference to Ali? Yeah. So, what you're essentially getting to, Ali, is, is your concern on them being too late uh, to, to make the announcement. So, uh, Initially, like because of all these statements coming out from Grush and other sources and the Soul Foundation and that and that chart that lays out what's going to be happening in the next several years and the, you know all these callouts, you know you, you're essentially saying there's a sense of urgency that needs to be happening within these programs and these higher ups, where where a statement needs to be stated to the public that uh, we ha there's a there there. And we need, and, and and we're in the process of of getting getting out this information, but it's going to be a, a a long arduous process, and and we need to plan things in order for it to roll out properly. So, is is that what you're trying to allude to, Ollie? Yes, definitely. They would save a face if they do that, and they also would take control over the over the communication with the public. Yeah, but now they. they just, They've actually been in control of keeping it out of the conversation of the public. So now as we're getting it into the point of getting it into the public uh, sphere, this is where the lack of a plan of how to get it there and why it's so important that it's someone to the extent of and with the credibility and history of, of what he's done in, let's say, uh, UAP recoveries uh, out of his... Uh, out of his time and the uh, AFRICOM command in Sudan. It, that's why we have uh, Colonel Carl Nell, who has probably been picked to be the next head of ARO. Now, when was he picked? I'm saying at least four months ago, for that matter. Yeah, so and I'll be surprised if he's not the head of ARO. Yes, and... Um... Uh, it's very important now, I think, even for the uh, policy-wise, uh, uh, with this international um, legacy program that they have, it's also a way for the DOD and, the, uh, and, the, and your government to keep them under control as well, to keep the leadership. Okay, guys, now it's almost 100 years now <laughs> that we've done this, uh, but we have to disclose it and we do it together, and we are the leaders. We are the one who makes the decision and and, uh, and the leadership of how this disclosure is going to be done. Because Absolutely. it's very easy to see the plan that you had, uh, uh, well, this disclosure plan. Well, that's wishful thinking. There are so many events that could have happening between here. Yeah. When they lose, the control of the of the uh, of the disclosure. So Absolutely. you better listen to uh, Mr. Grouch' uh, advice here. Mr. You gotta Grouch, have yes. a plan. You yeah. gotta have a plan. We'll get to that. Absolutely, Lee, have your hand up, yeah. my friend. Yeah, I think there. Grouch had mentioned that there's a little bit of concern that maybe our adversaries will uh, will kind of get to uh, disclosing before we do and kind of steal that away, steal our supremacy. Our, uh, you know, just the perspective, the perception of America. Uh, he had also mentioned in this um, two-hour and forty-minute interview, crazy, um, 
that that a that a foreign adversarial intelligence counterpart um, was able to tell him the name of the reverse engineering program within the United States. Um, so they know the name of our program. We know the name of our program. Well, we don't. Um, we know where their craft are. They know where our crafts are. Uh, so yeah, this is this is a problem. Um, this is not about the United States just carrying disclosure anymore. It's about all. the world. And something else, since we're talking about this, Lee, the other thing that David brought out is saying, yes, our adversaries all have reverse engineering programs. It's not that just the United States who's dabbling in this uh technology correct yeah well look who showed up my i didn't have to say mike 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 actually i did say uh sending a message but mike welcome how you doing my friend did we lose him no he's here he metered himself no no i'm yeah yeah i'm i'm right here sorry about that yeah no um yeah i was, was uh taking care of some uh information so um that's why i was a little late but yeah that was one hell of an interview that uh grush did with rogan did you cover the part yet about where he sat with uh senator harry reed no we haven't gotten there yet <laughs> oh that's that's fascinating and he played mark turner yeah, oh yeah, well, we'll, we'll we'll get to that because that's that's part of some of the information i've been running down oh this is roger this... and rogers and turner Yes, and you know what? <laughs> Would you look at this? This clip is huge. It's a force. It's forcing a quote raise or call end quote situation with the gatekeepers. Also, it's drawing out names of its offenders. If Rogan suspects Grush is, is BS, you can be sure that he will tear him a new one. Well, what did Grush say? Quote: You have the chair of the House and Telecommittee, Mike Turner, who was blocking this. And Mike Rogers, who was the chair of the Arms Services Committee. What am I talking about? Let's go ahead. Let's see now. What does he say? Um, you know, I could go ahead and read what Grush is going to say. We can recap that in a second. This is a three-minute, 55-second clip, so we're going to have to pause here or there to maintain our our uh, to the, to the, our fair use on this. But let's go ahead and play this little clip here. And we'll jump back and forth through it and see where it goes. Ready for this one, Mike? Yes, let's go, Thomas. This will be yes, fun. let's make it happen, my friend. All right, desktop TV, there you go. Scroll it down a little bit. Let's play this clip. So the Senate already passed it. They're chill with this. This is like, we're, we're good to go. And and But there's pushback in the House right now that is, you know, pardon my language, fucking ridiculous. <gasps> so they're saying... yes. David Grush drops the F bond, F bomb, and the S bomb more times than we usually do on a regular episode here. Disclosure tonight, Mike. <laughs> but he does drop it around the same amount of times that we drop it when we have private conversations. Oh no, it does. It's almost like we've got both Swan and Larry back on here. Well, at least on the public side of it, but on the private side of it, he's oh, yeah. no different than us. Oh God, you have some fun. With Shows it. you he's a real person. Yes, he does. For one, it's duplicating the DOD Arrows Office activities. They're doing good things. They're looking at UAP reports, trying to figure out what's balloons and air trash and what's weird stuff. And of course they are doing an historical review to try to understand the US's history on this too. But the problem is with that agency, it it's within the DOD and IC, not above. So you have an issue reaching into Department of Energy, other, you know, cabinet level agencies. So you need a presidential level panel that can declassify stuff, reach into other agencies and tell, you know, certain secretaries, we're coming in, we want your stuff under presidential authority. So what's happening in the House, from what I'm told from All right. people so on let's the Hill, pause this for a second. Getting up to the point of where we're at, yes, there's some pushback here or there, but now we're going to get into the part to talk about those Fargan ice holes in the House that are trying to keep the Schumer Amendment, the UAP Disclosure Act of 2024, out of NDA. That's, That's not all they're doing. They're doing that, and they're working together in an agreement, Rogers and Turner, to also remove Burchett because he's an advocate for public disclosure. Yep. And the UAP Amendment. It's actually called the UAP Disclosure Act for 2023. They're trying to block it. 
They're trying to abortionize the amounts of the legislation that have teeth that would force Lockheed, which Crush also talked about, to reveal the uh, UAP material. But remember, Lockheed have. wants to get this stuff out of their position. They try to get rid of it back in with OSAP, and they were refused because the CIA, who's involved with it, did not want to give it up or, or, you know, it's, it's like, this is ours. We don't want to give it to anybody else. So it's all like the mine, mine, mine. They don't want to share anything. Exactly. And Grush revealed that, but good for him. But this goes very deep, this rabbit hole with the conspiracy going on with both chairs of congressional committees that are working against their oath. Uh, you know, Turner was voted to be one of the most corrupt politicians in the Congress. So, and for good reason. So, and Grush mentioned that, by the way. Good for him. Yeah. So, uh, there's a lot going on here, and we're going to cover it. It's, this is going to be interesting. The public needs to know this. They oh, need yeah. to hear this information. Here, here we go, Mike. Oh, and by the way, would you look at this? We have 330 people watching the show right now with only 102 likes. That means only one out of three, three people has gone out there and hit that thumbs up. Do us a favor, friends. If you're having a good time for the effort we're putting into this, this is your time to give back and either give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'll take one or the other. And remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you here as a regular on Disclosure tonight. All right, here we go. Our working issue right now, you have the the chair of the House Intel Committee, Mike Turner, who's blocking us uh, from Ohio, Dayton, Ohio area. Right, Pat? Weird. Mm-hmm. And right, Pat, meaning right, Patterson. Air yes. Force. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Mike Rogers, which I'm kind of surprised uh, from Alabama, who's the chair of the House Armed Services Committee. So I have a. But wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mike. Who's in Alabama? Isn't Radiance Technologies in Alabama? Yes, they are. So we have um, Ohio, which is the military industrial complex. And then we have Alabama which is also the military industrial complex. And they're conspiring together in an agreement, both chairs of both committees, to block and abortionize the upcoming Schumer Amendment and remove Tim Burchett. And by the way, the reason I was late on the show is I confirmed it with my sources in Congress that what Grush is saying is not just an unfounded allegation. It's true. That agreement exists between both committees. They're getting away with this shit. And that's the problem. That's what we're going to try to bring it out, just like David did on Joe Rogan. It's good stuff. Yeah. And it is shit, my friend. It is. It's, uh, how do I find this? Oh, where's it coming from? Oh, a bullshit artist. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Let's play this. Here we go. Even the dog agrees to that. I'm with Mike and Mike right now. So Mike Turner, now remember, I went to his committee in December of last year. Uh, he wasn't there, but his staff and lawyers were. And of course he goes on Fox Business after the hearing, doesn't use my names like this whistleblower. He has no idea what he's talking about. I'm like, really? Tell me, Mike, have you ever been an Intel officer or served in the military? Oh wait, you've been the, a mayor, the mayor of Dayton, Ohio. You were voted most corrupt person in Congress a couple uh, years ago and uh, pull up his pack donors. Who are his biggest donors? Lockheed, Raytheon, Boeing. Okay. So, uh, and first of all, if you thought you needed more information or wanted to talk to me personally, why didn't you call me back when I reported to your committee? So, uh, and furthermore, besides blocking the bill, I'm sure you're familiar with like Representative Tim Burchette of Alabama, and he's been very outspoken on the issue. And what we she, she has, Cosmo. You have her hand up, my friend. Oh, I just got I just got a couple words to say about that statement. Conflict of interest. If if they try to do a block, considering his associations with Lockheed and those other corporations, I don't. I, I would think there an investigation would be put forward so the, that that block that's trying to happen won't, won't occur. But, but you got to remember, Cosmo, wrong. that is what the Supreme Court has considered legal, meaning. People can go ahead and literally buy votes by, well, they're not buying votes. They're lobbying and saying, hey, look at this a suitcase of cash. Here you go, Mikes. Tell you what, if you like this one, we've got 10 more right here with your names on it. But you have to go ahead and vote this way in order to qualify for the additional money for your campaigns. That's yeah, what we're dealing with. Shit. 
I know it's bullshit government. And honestly, I would love them to go ahead and make it illegal for any lobbying activity to go in Washington, go on in Washington, D.C. When they're in Washington, lawmakers should be there doing their jobs, not kissing, not licking the asses of special interest groups and getting the money and influencing their votes. If they want to be lobbied, do it back on your home turf, on your own time. Make it more difficult for these lobbyists to go ahead and actually buy the votes of as far as what's going on in D.C. But that's a long stretch to ever get there. I just hope we can. Let's continue on with this club with this clip. Not agree with everything Tim says about conventional stuff. That's you know, here no there. But you know he's been a champion on the oversight committee, and he was you know one of the members that I testified in public under oath regarding this. So like. Uh, and Mike Turner is looking to fund, according to staffers I've talked to uh, last two weeks, an opposition candidate for Tim's reelection in 2024. So why is Mike Turner going out of his way to destroy the career of a courageous Tennessee representative on the oversight committee? And why are you blocking a bill? And it's not going to cost much, a couple million a year max, you know, for the panel, which is like vaporware in U.S. government speak, Right. Um, uh, if there's nothing to see here, why are Mike Rogers and Mike Turner in the house blocking this bill that is, in my opinion, the most important legislation for transparency in American history? If there's nothing to see here, if I'm fucking crazy, multi-star generals I talk to are crazy, the intel docs that I read are incorrect, they're fucking forgeries or passage material or something like that. Good friends of mine that worked on the program are bullshitting me in some consorted uh, operation against me and my colleagues that it would be totally crazy to even conduct that because I took precautions. Then why don't we just pass this and see what happens? Great point. Now, if I jump back to desktop document, I should be able to bring the, not that one, desktop video. Let's go to this. Let's bring up a couple pictures of these bozos. Who's he talking about? We're talking about, there we go, good old Mike Turner and Mike Rogers. These are the guys that are behind trying to go ahead and 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 pull a fast one on disclosure. They're trying to keep us out of bringing forward the truth to go ahead and perpetually keep us in the dark because of the dark money that they're getting. Remember, all the money that's going to the defense agencies that are funding these bozos is coming from us, the taxpayer money. It goes from us to Congress. Congress allocates the money to the DOD. The DOD pays the defense contractors, but then the defense contractors go ahead and funnel the money back to Mike Turner and Mike Rogers because, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. And another quote that Mike Turner had said before, we don't want to go ahead and bring forward this disclosure and everything. It's making the DOD look bad. But if the DOD has done things that are wrong, they deserve to be called to the carpet, my friend. Brian, you have your hand up. Those pictures on your screen, everybody, that's the swamp that we've been talking about. Get them out. Write, call. If you're in the district, vote them out. No more swamp creatures in D.C. These these are the worst of the worst people. And I, 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 I don't know how else to put it, but take a good look at those photos Thomas has up. That is the face of the swamp right there. Well, I think I've got another view of their. There we go. There's a better view of those guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we should just put them right in the swamp. Absolutely disgust me. This is why Grush is a hero, and 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 he served his country well, and he's an absolute hero. These guys are swamp. They need to go. We need more honest brokers like Burchett, for example. Um, yeah, these guys are not good. Period. Yeah, absolutely. Ali, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, I think uh, with this interview with, with Grush, I think it's a very fantastic bonus question um, uh, that comes up. And uh, if you listen to what Grush is saying, I, it's obvious that you have a totally corrupt system in uh, in the in the U.S. Because yeah. if they can even, even attack the opponents <laughs> uh, and also. Um, affect the legislation this much for money 
well, then you're not a dem democracy anymore. You have to stop this. It has to be illegal. So double the wages for everyone in, in Congress and Senate, that's okay. But forbid them to take bribes. Yeah, it has to uh, stop. I would agree with you so much, my friend. But it's, uh, you know, they always talk about the democracies run run our planet in a lot of different places. But the truth of the matter is there's a lot of deep pockets behind these democracies that actually get the laws on how they want them to be. Michael, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick point here. Uh, I have a political premise that all political systems work till they're, until they're put into the hands of men, then they become corrupt. So I question, is the system corrupt or are the people that are in the system corrupt? And I would, I would say that it's uh, more the people that are in the system that become corrupt as opposed to the system. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, my friend. It looks like we had another one of our friends join the back. Peter Pan, a long time no see. How you doing, my friend? Uh, good. I'm just listening to the uh, world's best politician there, Mike Lee, who's not corrupt at all in no way, shape, or form. Is he doing anything other than looking out for the best interests of his constituents and the man in the street? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where it is, fortunately or unfortunately, for that matter. I think it's more of an unfortunately, for that matter. Now, Aubrey McLeod says, could we ever see Grush get the arrow job? I don't think Grush wants the arrow job, tell you the truth. That's going to be a lot more bureaucracy to keep the truth from coming out versus where the truth should be. Mike, you have your hand up, my friend? I do. I just wanted to make a quick side point off the subject right now. All the gruff debunkers, deniers have said, including our uh, our friend, you bet your boots, Bill Nelson from NASA, who claimed that uh, he believes that Grush was getting second and third hand information from a buddy of his who had something in a garage someplace. Well, on this podcast, at one point, Grush mentioned that he actually. Who's got the mic on? Yeah, okay. I just I just muted uh, Patrick. Um, yeah, what I was saying is is that Grush had said to Rogan that he actually has direct knowledge, firsthand knowledge of the UAP program and that he wasn't able to discuss the details of that publicly and he hasn't been cleared he's waiting for clearance to go through dopsa so he never said he didn't have it he just said he couldn't talk about it a lot of people seem to have missed that point of the interview with rogan where he was talking about that but i didn't i heard it he said it clear as day so he actually does know what he's talking about and anyone that tries to claim that he doesn't they don't know what they're talking about so I thought that the audience should know those facts because that was discussed today on Rogan and that's what's going on. So and, interesting. And Mike, you are exactly right. He actually, when he was asked that in front of the, uh, in, in front of the house, uh, he said, I'll have to talk about that in the skiff, which is pretty much his version of a yes. So you are exactly right. Yeah, but he actually, yeah, you're right, Brian, but he actually said it to, to Rogan today. He actually said, I do have direct knowledge. I have firsthand information, but I haven't been cleared to talk about it publicly yet. So he confirmed it, and which I think is amazing. And all of the debunkers, including Bill Nelson, um, should now look at things differently because um, he knows what he's talking about. And the people that say that Grush doesn't, they don't know what they're talking about. And he proved that today. So I think that's something that we should talk about and cover, which is why I'm bringing it up, because I think a lot of people missed it. So it's valuable information. The other thing is that I don't know if we're going to get to it yet, but if we do, he also mentioned that, Brian, I, I know you've been on top of this. He was asked by Rogan if we have direct communication with the NHI, and he kind of alluded to that in a very interesting way. But right now we're talking about the corruption in the Congress with uh, Mike Turner and uh, Mike Rogers. So let's finish covering that. And no, I think we we'll covered that. that. I think we've uh, we've beat that freaking dead horse like it's a toy from uh, the Black Vault store on YouTube. But I mean, Rush on was eBay. actually talking about it again with Rogan today. And he said that um, he can't disclose it for the simple fact that uh, it's not his job 
to make a public disclosure of that nature. It's up to um, the executive branch. And um, he also said that if a disclosure like that, because people say rip the Band-Aid off, he said that he knows firsthand that if the Band-Aid was ripped off in such a dramatic fashion, it would have severe consequences against the financial institutions and it would create chaos with a lot of the uh, population uh, so but that's the same bsa disclosure. answer that they've been giving us mike for 75 plus years now talking about the problem going about 75 plus years one of the things that if i could dive into this one before we move on since let's get rid of mike freaking rogers mr rogers and push him off to the off to freaking uh the land of make-believe. Um, one of the things that Grush was talking about in it, oh God, now I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> he was talking about that the 33 crash in Italy in Magenta. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you, the 33 crash in Italy. About. But he was talking about the 33, thank you for picking up my mind on that one, my friend. You you win a, you win a cigar on that one. Now, but besides talking about the 33 crash in Italy that he could talk about, Apparently, there was another crash that happened in the U.S. before 1933 that he still can't talk about. What the heck is up with that? I mean, we're talking well over 100 years, and he still can't talk about it? He was alluding to multiple crashes yeah. long before 33, which I thought was fascinating. And I don't think anybody else picked it up either. Are we talking but about the crash it. in 1872 down in Texas, by chance? No, he didn't mention it by name. I know, but that's one them. of the that's one of the ones where supposedly we had a cigar yes. that crashed with a windmill. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you're right. But here's the thing: Rogan pressed him on it, right? He wouldn't and say a word. His response was, "I can't disclose it. It's a national security matter." Isn't that amazing? Something From over a hundred years like ago. Of years. It's national over a hundred years old, and it's still tied up as a matter of national security. But, but, but. Before we get to you, Brian, that could be uh, tied to the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, Nuclear Security Act of, what it was it called again, from 1954? The Atomic Energy Act. Thank you. 1954. Yeah, which is tied up all of this, and a majority of the information about UFOs is all put under that general, very vague part of the, uh, the act back from 1954, the Atomic Energy Act that basically says anything that talks about any kind of material that could put off any kind of radiation or have something that it's going to be decayed is uh, put at the utmost level of top of, of top secret that's keeping all of this out, which was a, a, aligns back to what I'm saying is it's all being hidden by the DOE. Yeah. And now he revealed that it was Lockheed that's been in actual possession of this material, and they were getting it from the CIA, which you already spoke about earlier. So now it's starting to creep out. The cracks of truth are beginning to show. Yeah. And this is coming forward. And let me remind you, Rogan has the largest podcast on the planet. So this message that he's giving out isn't just going locally in, in the area or here in the United States, all around the world internationally. Yeah. So it's amazing. This was one hell of an interview. Yeah. Now they're saying the OSS was founded in June 1942. The Italy crashes when 1933. So that could not have been involved in that. No, it couldn't have been. But what they said about the crash in 1933, one of the things that kind of went on that actually brought uh, Italy into the access, which was between Japan, Germany, and Italy, was the actual crash UFO that they had from that time. Apparently, the Italians looked at it. They brought the Germans in. They said, hey, is this your Wunderwaffe kind of a thing? And they're like, no. And they tried to, of course, figure it out, but good luck on those days. And that was something that was probably saucer-shaped where the outer part of the craft had broken apart, and all they had left was the center part of the ship. Of course, they say none of that. Uh, those particular craft were empty, and there were no biologics in it. That's what Grush said. But now the way he described that it looked like an acorn or a bell when the ventricular round part of it was broken off, doesn't that sound to you like the Nazi bell that they've been talking about historically? Yeah, it could be. But it it's definitely points it back to Italy, not to Germany. And the thing is, we have to say then, was the 
story about the German bell? Was that disinformation put off at that time to make us think about the bell coming out of Germany when the bell actually was a crash UFO from Italy? That Correct. sounds like our own misinformation, disinformation being played to change history so they could cover up and get their toys and bring it back to the United States. Which they did in conjunction with Pope Pius XII, which is the Vatican, which means that the church for almost 100 years has had full knowledge of this. Yeah. And they've been hiding it and lying about it. Yeah. We know the they church likes forward. to cover up and hide their little their little short guys that they usually <laughs> like. Yeah. Brian. Well, obviously, that ain't all they've been hiding. Again, oh, I, I know. It. Brian, your hand is up, my friend. Yeah, so I just want to bring up a point here. Uh, uh, I did catch the point that uh, Grush said, uh, well, tacitly admitted. Run with it, Mike. Um, that prior to 33, that there has been crashes, not just one crash, but multiple. And I want to throw a little wrinkle on this, um, uh, Thomas and Mike, and let me know what you think. But um, what if one of those maybe he's referring to, if we combine with what Russ Coltart says, that there's a big one laying underneath something, that they built a building over it, that some of these have been buried or they're underneath monuments or stuff like that that have been around for a while. I think that's totally feasible, too. Um, so so he, prior to 1933 could be 2,000 years ago, for all we know. Um, so I think that that was, you're exactly right, Mike, and you kind of pick up on that, but he did tacitly admit that there's been retrievals, crashes, plural, prior to 1933 and I, and it may not just be crashes it may be things that have been found in the sand if you will yeah which is the point that i made when we were just talking about this because i heard that too brian very clear and very important information for people to digest because it gives you a big picture as to how long this has been going on and actually what's been being hidden the entire time from the public. So yeah, it's it's very useful information, it's valid. And Ali has his hand up next. Ali, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, uh, uh, you know, from the uh, result with this uh, Grouch interview, I'm thinking about the mainstream media, how irrelevant they have become now and we also have very good evidence now with, with this show and joe rogan you have valuetainment you have a lot of big growing youtube channels and podcasts that earned the confidence from from the listeners from because they are authentic they are very important to follow basic uh, democratic principles and uh, of course, alternative media now uh, is is so so important and so also re already now so dominant when it comes to the information um, to the public. And I love that they really killed themselves. They shot themselves in the foot so many times in this so long time. So I think this is fantastic. Thank you, Thomas, and everyone who is engaged in this question now. And thank you, Joe Rogan, and all the others. Grush and uh, well, all the people bringing this uh, forward. It's very important, and it's uh, uh, well. I'm happy. <laughs> Just that I love this. Thank you. Thank oh, you. You're very welcome, Ali. It's our pleasure. That's why we do this. You're more than welcome. We have more hands up back here, Thomas. Harold, take it, my friend. I heard an interesting theory the other day that uh, that uh, the, the St. Louis Arch. Was built there because of a crash UFO. They couldn't. Yeah, couldn't it's over a river. Something. I don't think so. But anyway, thanks for the idea. It's, it's an interesting oh, concept okay. to say the least. You never know uh, where it could be. Um, now, one. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, concepts out there. Absolutely, Cosmo. Uh, just referring back to Ollie's statement, how he's appreciative uh, about the alternative media and, and what Joe Rogan's providing to the public because he's one of the most popular podcasts in the nation. Do we, uh, I, I was trying to look it up. Do we have a, even though this was just released today, do we have a total of how many views this has? No, I do not, my friend. I know the uh, the one that's over on Twitter. I mean, the, the actual uh, video that's over on, what is it on? Um, on YouTube had like over probably 500,000 views already earlier today. 
and that's just a, that's that's just a short one. That was a twelve minute clip, and it was yeah. much earlier today. The number is much higher by now. Yeah, absolutely. If if I can, uh, getting to our next little piece here, I've had for a period of time. David Grush on uh, said earlier today as well. We are not alone. Period, and it goes back for thousands of years. And honestly, if you ask me, I wish Rick was here because that sounds like a line from ancient aliens, but now we've got David Grush saying the exact same thing. Let's jump in and listen to Dave. Go ahead and say this little clip here. Let me go ahead and bring this up again. If you haven't, if you get a chance, the uh, Joe Rogan podcast, two hours, 41 minutes. It's a long one, but it's worth every single minute to go ahead and listen to this one. Let me bring up this next one, desktop TV. Here we go. Uh, Let's listen to this clip from David. Are we alone? Well, the answer is we're not alone. And I know that with 100% certainty, which as an intel officer, you never say 100%, but all things pointed towards, uh, based on the people I talk to, like Harry Reid, and I use him as an example, but I talk to the highest of the high people you could possibly talk to to catch my drift. So... Mm -hmm. Unless all of them are lying and they're covering up something else, which I don't even know what it would be at this point, because the phenomenon is real. It's been going on for thousands of years. People have been seeing strange things, and not everybody's mass hallucinating. Are we alone? Well, now, the answer is we're... since he did bring up Harry Reid, a very interesting thing to understand about Harry Reid is nine months before Harry Reid passed away, David Grush, along with... Uh, four other whistleblowers went to go ahead and visit him. Did you hear that part of the interview, Mike? Oh, my God. I was just about to cover it. I already covered it on uh, social media. Yes, he spoke with Harry Reid in his living room, face-to-face. Sitting, not, not sitting right next to him, literally, yeah. But then he also said that Harry Reid spoke directly with President Joe Biden. He called him on the it. phone, yeah. Yep. So Biden can't play dumb and say he knows nothing about this. He actually was made well aware of everything that Grush found out because it went through Harry Reid. Yeah. So he's so he's not in the dark. But then Grush went on to say about the uh, Schumer Amendment and how that that was constructed together directly from the executive branch. So this gets very interesting. So the more that the, the executive branch tries to play dumb about this, Grush is releasing the truth about how they really do know about it, and they haven't said a word publicly about it. Right. But and, and what it alludes to, Mike, is what I've been saying for a while, is the White House, the executive branch, is not in the dark on this at all. They've been aware of this, of every single presidency going forward. They've been involved with the cover-up. They've dealt with the cover-up. Their Secretary of Defense deals with it. They deal with it. They deal with the Department of Energy, because remember— The DOE reports directly to the president of the United States. So you have to look at the big picture of things. And everyone always tries to say, oh, the president doesn't know anything. And what do I say about that? They're nothing more than, oh, a bullshit artist. And if they want to say, you know what, (laughs) we've looked in our presidential records and we haven't found anything. We, We ain't found shit. That's not the case. They found it. They've known about it. They've been directing the program and what's going on, and they've been intimately involved with it from presidency to presidency to presidency. Yeah, but at least we know with the current president, who hasn't come forward in any way or shape to the public about this, we now heard directly out of Grush's mouth that we know firsthand that he knows about this. He has full knowledge and information of everything that Grush was aware of. Yeah. Not only that, Grush, Brian, go ahead before we get to our next little 12 second clip. Yeah, I'll be real quick here. Um, he did oh, call out John okay. Podesta um, in a good way, not, not in a bad way, as well as Avril Haines. And uh, just, just as a side note, too, there was an abrupt resignation of a gentleman named Stephen Black, who was really high in the DOE. He was the director of the Office of Intelligence and Counterintelligence, and they're looking into why he resigned right now, the House is. And so I, you know, whether or not that's going to have any play in this or not. Did he resign or was he removed? 
I, I, I saw some stuff on Twitter about that today. Both, yes, yes. Um, technically reassigned. Um, so removed and then reassigned. So he didn't. Uh, he he didn't resign. He was reassigned. In other words, he was taken out of. He was removed from his position and then given a window seat someplace else to focus on what's happening outside the building versus what's in front of him. Exactly right. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but uh, I thought that was interesting since we brought the DOE. Um, and then uh, Mike was bringing up the executive branch where where uh, Grush calls out Podesta and Avril Haines in a good way, by the way, Yeah, that they're on their side. So I think that the executive branch is yeah. in this, which is what we've been saying all along. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, OG Skywatch says Trump seems to act like it's a nothing burger compared to with a threat of nuclear war. Here's the thing. It's, this is a lot bigger, a lot worse, because this could bring forward nuclear war. If you remember when how Trump wasn't that honest with the American people when he brought up, oh, don't worry about the COVID and stuff like that. It's not so bad and blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. He already had all the insights. He was just trying to downplay the situation. Anybody who was in that role, if they're going to ask the questions, that was his way to deal with the stressful downplay it compared to where it could be because this could lead to a nuclear war because of the severity of what people are fighting through to get to it. Now, talking about other presidents, I've got a little, this is just a 12 segment clip. I miss this piece where actually David Grush brings up Obama. Did you remember this part of it? Uh, conversation, Mike? No, because if you remember, we were having a private conversation when this was going on. And I told you that while I was talking to you that I missed certain parts of it. I missed parts of this, too. I was running around doing a bunch of different stuff here. Oh, Evan B. says it's 31 degrees Fahrenheit there. It's 48 degrees and raining here. How about that? Let's jump into this now. Here we go. The, oh, God, that's a little bit big. Let's go ahead and listen to this little clip here and see where it takes us. Uh, based on the people I talk to, like Harry Reid, and I use him as an example, but I talk to the highest of the high people you could possibly talk to to catch my drift. So, uh, based on the people I So he didn't say, I guess he, apparently he must have talked with Barack Obama. I didn't get it out of that clip, but it's still interesting conversation to say the least. Let me see what else I can go ahead and find here to bring up in our next clips. Um, Okay. This next clip we're going to listen to is the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023 must pass. We, the people, need to stand up against such malice from Representatives Turner and Rogers. Congressman, what can you tell us about this? Non-human... Hold on. Let me get to this one here. Uh, this is a clip that has stuff from news, Fox News and stuff. Let's jump into this one. Give me a second to bring it back to desktop TV. All right, here we go. Mike Turner, now remember, I went to his committee in December of last year. Uh, he wasn't there, but his staff and lawyers were. And, of course, he goes on Fox Business after the hearing, doesn't use my names like this whistleblower. He has no idea what he's talking about. Wow. Congressman, what can you tell us about this? Non-human biologics? You know, Maria, I always love it when you have somebody who comes forward and testifies about things that they don't know anything about. Uh, I'm like, really? Tell me, Mike. I mean, the, the, the most I think, striking aspect of all of the testimony was repeatedly over and over again, uh, the whistleblowers had to say, actually, I don't have any knowledge of this. Somebody else told me that. Have you ever been an intel officer or served in the military? Oh, wait, you've been the, a mayor, the mayor of Dayton, Ohio. You were voted most corrupt person in Congress a couple uh, years ago and uh, pull up his PAC donors. Who are his biggest donors? Lockheed, Raytheon, Boeing. OK, I mean, really, it, 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 this would take thousands and thousands of people for, for such an, an unbelievable uh, cover up to, to be occurring and for people to speak with such um, you know, confidence over something that they do not know is, I think, something certainly everybody needs to be concerned about. Uh, and first of all, if you thought you needed more information or wanted to talk to me personally, why didn't you call me back when I reported to your committee? So aliens are not on Earth, then? Maria, there, there, I, I certainly can't tell you that there are no aliens here. I can tell you that certainly there's no, no evidence that, that what the gentleman is testifying about, he, has, he, he said himself personally, he has no direct knowledge of. 
Uh, if there's nothing to see here, why are Mike Rogers and Mike Turner in the House blocking this bill that is, in my opinion, the most important legislation for transparency in American history? If there's nothing to see here, if I'm fucking crazy, multi-star generals I talk to are crazy, the intel docs that I read are incorrect, they're fucking forgeries or passage material or something like that. Good friends of mine that worked on the program are bullshitting me in some consorted uh, operation against me and my colleagues that it would be totally crazy to even conduct that because I took precautions, then why don't we just pass this and see what happens? Your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, he's talking about what we just covered a little while ago in the show about how Turner Block. and... Yeah, he's he's talking about the corruption going on in Congress, trying to gut the uh, UAP Disclosure Act of 2023 by Schumer. Um, and he's right. It, this takes away our democracy. Both um, Representative Mike Turner and um, Rogers, they're violating their oath of office to the Congress to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. Th this criminal conspiracy that they're in agreement with, also to remove Burchett from office, this is something that the American public needs to be made aware of. And this kind of activity uh, needs to be stopped and shut down. And Grush is talking publicly about it on Joe Rogan, which is the largest platform out there that people listen to from all over the world, not just the United States. So yeah, it's, it's a powerful message. But we also covered that the president we now know is completely aware of this topic. And he also made a point, Grush, that the Schumer Amendment wasn't written in a vacuum and that Schumer is a proxy in the legislation, in the legislative branch that it seems that Joe Biden is using from the executive branch to get this information passed into law. The question then would be, why? Why are they doing that? If they don't want to disclose it, because if Biden wanted to, he could disclose this in a minute with the stroke of a pen with an executive branch declassifying all this, but he's not. So then the question is, why is he playing games? Why is he trying to get Schumer to put an amendment like this through, even though he can easily disclose everything to the public? Well, because when the truth eventually comes out, they can't accuse him of saying you were covering it up. His response would then be, no, I worked with uh, Chuck Schumer. We were trying to get this out there, but we had to do it through due process and through proper channels. So they're covering their ass. This is, you can consider this like an insurance policy for them politically with the upcoming election cycle. That's, that's what this really is. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate because the public and the reason Grush became public, he went out with this is because everybody has a right to know that we're not alone on this earth. And that's the points that he, he's been making repeatedly. Um, it's, it's just fascinating that they could get away with this shit the way that they have. And it takes somebody like Grush to come forward. And even though he came out already, people seem to be not paying too much attention. Do you really think that after this interview today that the mainstream media is gonna pick up the ball and run with this? I, if I had to guess, I would say probably not. What do you think, Thomas? No, because they haven't been involved in anything that's been going on. It seems we're dealing with the regular media blackout that we've been seeing going across. So we had the blackout come that happened during the uh, last hearing. Uh, it didn't hit any of the major newspapers. It didn't hit any of the major, uh, if you want to call it, media outlets on the day that it happened. It was picked up a little bit here and there. We had it more picked up on radio shows by personalities than we see it coming from mass media. So we've gotten past the point of acceptance saying, are there things out there, what's going on? But it seems like when you have the biggest story of humanity going on around us and all of our media is just acting like there's nothing going on, it, I beg to ask the question, how much money is being pumped into the media to go ahead and have them keep their mouth shut? Brian. Yeah, I just want everybody to keep in mind that most major media are arms of the intelligence agencies. Um, for example, the Washington Post, 
uh, the New York Times, that's CIA, FBI. Um, they've all got they've all got their tentacles in it, and I, I don't think that's news to anybody on this show. Um, but uh, it would be news to other people. But oh, you mean Project Mockingbird, which they correct the Ex and it's exactly right. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Project Mockingbird basically um, is where the intelligence agencies took over or corrupted uh, major media companies where, hey, if you guys get a story about this or that, come to me first, and in return, we will feed you X, Y, Z scoops. That way you guys can stay you know, on top of things, and, and, and that's kind of the way it works. That's been the way it's working. That's why these independent journalists, uh, what News Nation's doing, Ask a Poll, M Matt Laszlo, all those guys. Us. I mean, we are too. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Excuse me. I forgot. I forgot <laughs> us here. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> and this is why I said early on we're ahead of the darn curve here. And to look at a son of a bitch like Mike Turner, that guy needs to go. So anybody in his district, get him out of there. That is, when I talk about the swamp, and I'll say it again, that is the face of the swamp. Get him out. Yeah, Brian, let me remind Disgust you. Disgust me. Disgust Project, me. Project Mockingbird, it wasn't just scoops or information they were giving him. They actually had them on the goddamn payroll. They were paying him. They were on Yes, salary. correct. The money, too, Mike. You are exactly right. Yep, but the money's huge in this. Huge, huge, huge. So let me, exactly right. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is there anything that's current or relevant to support that theory? Oh, I know. Hold on. Let me think for a second. Elon Musk, when he released the Twitter papers, didn't it show how heavily involved the government was in controlling social media, which is the same, which is Project Mockingbird fully operational? It's the same well, thing in the modern 21st century. Instead of newspaper exactly right. and print, it's Twitter and social media. Right, right. And he and, and he had to root out all the FBI agents when he came into town when he took over Twitter. And and so now there's a free speech platform and God forbid that that happens. And so now you got the IRS coming after him. They're looking at Elon Musk. I mean, they're coming after Elon. You guarantee it because they want to shut down that free speech. God forbid that they don't have their agents inside of all these things. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, I need to bring this little clip up here from Resonate, who says, John Greenwald from the Black Vault said that the, o the CIA are cracking down on whistleblowers and any chance for disclosure. He would know, but they, see, the thing is, the FOIA process has, that's been brought out recently is completely broken. Majority of the information is hidden in the DOE. The DOE is completely exempt from it. So, realistically, John Greenwald is literally a greens, yeah, green, green wand for that matter, is someone who is trying to say, oh, we're going to get the answer from FOIA. All he is, he's just a little sock puppet, a little freaking parrot box, if you want to call it for Susan Goff. Mike? Well, let, let me remind you that our friend and colleague, um, from the, uh, from the Liberation Times, yeah. who was supposed to be appearing on the show soon. Didn't he recently go all over social media and he was a little upset that he felt that Susan Goff had lied right to his face? Well, he didn't mention her name by, by he didn't mention her name, but he made an insinuation that he was lied to with regards to Sean Kirkpatrick and what was going on with him. And yeah, he, he basically, without mentioning her name, implicated that the that a representative from the DOD had lied to him about Sean Kirkpatrick. Well, if you well, remember. I want to I want to jump in here and just uh, kind of in a word of defense of these people. I oh, I okay. happen to have seen an excellent photograph of Susan Goff briefing Sean Kirkpatrick about an arrow issue once and I thought they were doing a fantastic job in that photo. You want to share the photo? I'm looking for the photo now. I thought I grabbed that earlier. Did I send you a link to that? I, I sent that to you earlier today, didn't I, Mike? I, I have think... to check. Hold on. One no, second. no, no. Let's I sent I you the it. I sent you the picture of that one. I know I did. I sent you a link earlier today. No, actually, I sent you a DM on that. Let me go ahead and find this. 
Oh, let me check Twitter if you sent me a DM. No, I Hold sent on. you a DM. I can go ahead and bring that one up really quick here. Let me get this here, my disclosure. Oh, yeah, I shared a post. Here we go. <laughs> this is better than that. This is better. This is a picture that came to us from uplifting tweets. Let's see if I can find the document one. Let Give me a second here. There's nothing you're going to see on this desktop. It's just what I've got going on. Let me get to this, bring this around on, get it there. Let me crop this down a little bit there. Let me bring this over here a little bit. Take the bottom of the screen. Oh, look, there you go. There is the chat. I think this is the pic. <laughs> this is an unbelievable picture that was given to us by uplifting tweets. There's a lot to unpack here, my friends. What are we all looking at? Let's go ahead and let's play, let's play Where's Waldo. But if you look at there, we have Stephen Greer. On whose body is that? Who, whose body do you think that is, Mike? That's Chris Little's body wearing a Tupacabra T-shirt. But, oh, my God, who is down on the bottom of the picture? Who do we have down there? Let's take a look and see. Oh, my goodness, there's Mike Turner standing with an orb. And who's, <laughs> and who's next to Mike Turner? <laughs> That's Rick. Who else do we have there? We have, we have Mick West. We've got John Greenwald. And then we've got Truth Seekers. I can't read what's on the bus, though. I cannot read what's on the bus. Got to have some fun with it. Zero days until something. Can't get to it. But if you look a little bit farther, we've got... Oh, there we go. I know who that is. I've recognized that. I figured that who it is. You've got Jeremy McGowan. Standing with his Land Rover getting blasted out of the air by a jet. But oh my God, who's that in the back? It's Lou Buffet exploding. <laughs> but who do we have up here? It's Ashton Forbes, the guy who's going ahead and talking about the ridiculous, the ridiculous, <laughs> the ridiculous. Uh, MH370 piece. Oh my God, what a thing. Video. But there yeah, we go. The Black Vault Store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I think, I don't know who that is. Is that? I don't know who that is up there on the plane. Is that Epstein? I don't know. I can't tell. But I think over on the side of the island, uh, let me uh, untrim it a little bit. There's something going on, but it looks like there's nuns piling into the back of a Jeep. I have no idea what's going on, but if we look off to the right side, there you go. Uh, who's that again? That's um, the guy from the New York Post. Forget his name. Green, Street. Green, Street. Green Street and the death of UCR. Got to have some fun. <laughs> I had to go ahead and bring this one up. Sorry about that, but this probably isn't the one you're talking about, but you're talking about Susan Goff. <laughs> Let me shrink this down a little bit more. I try to make it big. Everyone could see it. Yes, we have Susan Goff as the monster coming up out of the back. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting people out there in, uh, in the disclosure land that are all trying to do whatever they can to keep the truth from coming out. I don't think this is what you were talking about, was it, Peter? No, Peter was talking about Susan Goff at the hearing with Kirkpatrick about her bending over the table, roasting up her skirt, and getting railed in the ass by uh, Kirkpatrick. Oh that was the God. point. No, I, was, I was talking about a, you know, a picture of a, a young-looking Susan Goff uh, briefing Sean Kirkpatrick. <clears throat> oh, I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that yeah, one you, yet. Yeah, no, no, we, we, you did see that. That came out of you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's see. No, we're not going to get to that one. Coming from the view, I like it's the show. The, uh, it's the old, the old photo. Oh, I've got you, got you, Ali. Your hand is up, my friend. Yeah, it's uh, just concerning uh, the media and the uh, the lies uh, that we are fed. I want you all to check out an organization where you can see it's an open. Uh, disclosure of the members of something Orwellian called Trusted News Initiative. And you can see the members in this organization. It's all the organizations that are talking about, that we learn now, everybody who's talking about misinformation, disinformation, 
or claim that they see a threat to our democracy. It's all the same liars. What they're really talking about is censorship, and the one who's really uh, threatening democracy are themselves. And when you see that, it's complete, uh, it's almost all the Western uh, oh, yeah. news organization who is connected to, to the Trusted News Initiative. And even more beyond that, uh, we know, we, we all know that the three letter agencies, they are in control of this Trusted News Initiative of the narratives. But they build another la layer. So they put up an um, international fact checkers organization. So, <laughs> uh, you know, the lies now has become in two levels. First, um, uh, they, uh, the propaganda that we get from all our Western media. And on top of that, they have these so-called fact checkers who attack anyone who criticizes uh, the narratives. And if you see that clearly, as I do, then you really have to, uh, to understand what the big problem is here. Our mainstream media is so corrupt, so unreliable, so false, misleading, man manipulated. So we cannot trust anything they write about any topic, any narrative. Just show them both middle fingers and beg them to go to a place where it's kind of hot. Thank yeah. you. I hear you. Thank you very much. Nick, you have your hand up, my friend. Yes. Um... What do you think about when Grush like said that the United States like might have had contact with aliens? Have you have I seen that part yet? Oh yeah, with regards to so Grush brought up that you know potentially that the United States has been working with the non-human intelligence. Um, I don't think that's out of the question. What do you think, Peter? Or Mike? Yeah, Brian. Um... You know, I'm just a little um, distracted because I uh, posted the story that we're covering right now about uh, Mike Rogers and Mike Turner, and I got uh, I got reached out to by Richard at the Galileo Project. He's a postdoctoral research scientist on the Galileo the Galileo Project at Harvard University. Yeah, um, and he wants to know um, about. Well, who my sources are and how I was able to confirm it. Wow, that sounds like spoken from somebody who's trying to cover the information up. Isn't that interesting? Coming out of the Galileo Project, uh, uh, isn't that Avi Loeb's uh, organization? Yeah. Mike, you can Why? give him my name, mate. Just tell what? him none your business. <laughs> can you believe the Galileo Project is trying to uh, find that information about? We're confirming what Grush said. I guess they don't like that. They're well, you have, you have to ask them, why are you looking to confirm this? Yeah, coming from Avi Loeb's organization, I find it highly suspicious. It's suspect. Strange. They're supposedly a private uh, academic organization. Why would they be concerned with what's going on in the Congress? Or trying to cover up what's been going on in the Congress? Right. Odd, very odd. So I guess Avi has his hands in a lot of different pots. Well, it, it depends on if that's the person that you're really talking with, because you don't know who it is you're at. You might be talking with Mike. That's no. Thing. I just checked his um. Gal I just checked his Twitter account. It's who he says he is. This is legit. Interesting to say the least. Interesting uh -huh. to say the least. Now I got yeah, another. It doesn't really make sense, to be honest with you. Galileo should have nothing to do with the corruption in Congress. Yeah. Should it? It shouldn't, but he might the be only interested in it. I see is Kirkpatrick. So you know, if you're who... saying you're getting it from congressional staff, or you don't need to say which office it came from. <laughs> no, I don't, and I know that already. I... We're familiar as journalists. We've learned about we're that before, haven't we, Mike? Oh, we have. <laughs> we know we're protected under the First Amendment. They can go fuck themselves. But why is the Galileo Project getting involved in this? See, that's what I don't understand. Is this because Kirkpatrick came to Avi's doorstep, Mike? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. they also wrote a paper together, Brian. So they were in bed together, strange bedfellows. But why is his organization today 
reaching out to me because we're confirming Grush's story on Rogan. That doesn't make sense, but they're doing it. Yeah, he's not going to like my response, but that's okay. I just thought it was interesting because while we were on the show, it just popped up on my screen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good point, Mike. Maybe it's Kirkpatrick wanting to know who the sources are for this because Kirkpatrick and Avi Loeb have apparently had some contact, or maybe it's just somebody from the Galileo Project who's uh, interested in verifying this information. But on the other hand, it could be uh, a plus that someone from the Galileo Project is actually looking at this and taking this seriously as information in addition to yeah. going out and looking for scientific information. So right. I think it remains to be seen what the motivations are. I think we need to kind of follow now, up on this. Someone just brought up out. on this, Peter, if I could, Galileo Project dredged the sea and found remnants of an intergalactic object. What have you done? But the thing is, realistically, what was dredged up from the bottom of the ocean was potentially something considered industrial waste from coal because when they went and brought up a controlled sample from a different part of the ocean where this shouldn't have been, Peter, didn't they find similar samples? Uh, yeah, they, they had some samples in the control section as well as in the uh, section that they were actually looking for they just had more spherols in the section that they were looking at. But, you know, the fact that they had some in the control sections too uh, does raise some questions about what exactly these things are if they were also present in the control sections, which should have been pretty close to zero. For control this control project. would have been we're going to go to an area where there's not even close to this and there shouldn't be anything in it, but they still found something in it. Yeah, it was in an area that they shouldn't not have had that asteroid come down at all. Uh, no, no debris from that asteroid should be in those areas because it was too far off track yeah. from where they were looking. And they found, uh, they didn't find as many of these spirals in there, but the fact that they did find some, uh, some it does raise an eyebrow about this, and it definitely needs to be addressed. And I know Avi will... Uh, uh, probably not graciously respond to that. He'll probably throw a fit or a temper tantrum or get upset yeah. that anyone's criticizing him. But uh, I think it, it is a legitimate like point that should be explained. Yeah, absolutely. Talk Reynolds, to them about this. Before we get on to our next clip, go ahead. Where, uh, um, if, if they really, if you were saying, if the person where, really wanted to know, um, why wouldn't they just reach out to David Brush themselves? They're asking Mike because, you know, obviously we're, it's the same kind of. Sh it's because Mike person. tweeted about it and David Grush isn't on Twitter. David Grush isn't really on any social media. I think he's on Instagram, maybe Facebook, but that's about it. So yeah, but people... if this guy is so important, he's on the Galileo Project and he's doing investigative work and he's, why is he asking your because Mike of, put out a tweet, a really long tweet about that, and there's a lot of people going back okay. and forth I on it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go yep. ahead and continue on. Now I got another clip coming in from David Grush, one of our last ones for tonight. If you're in a fourth dimension physical space, what if active creation is creating other consciousness realities in our universe where we might be connected to the same universal consciousness or a higher dimension of sentient life force. This gets a little deep, but I think it's something we should die, uh, jump into. Let me go ahead and bring this clip up, and let's go ahead and play this one. All right, here we go. If you're, say, a mo you know, higher dimensional sentience, right, the act of creation, so act of creation for 3D beings is having a baby, right? It's producing another three-dimensional object. Well, if you're in five-dimensional space, or even, I guess, four-dimensional physical space, what if act of creation is creating other conscious realities and other universes? And the mm. act of creation is creating the universe where you, me, Jamie, whatever, we might be connected to the same, um, I'll call it universal consciousness or a, a higher dimensional sentient 
life force or life form. I know that sounds like really out there, but when you think about it, um, there's a lot of other theologies out there that basically espouse that. I have a very good friend of mine who's um, PhD level, kind of higher up in the Mormon church, and basically the Mormon theology is kind of like that. The Mormons say you were once with God or like God, but then you were sent down to like a lower plane of existence. And that's literally what I'm talking about right now, but just in a secular sense. Mm. So maybe, uh, yeah, we're all created beings from, and this, you know, this doesn't like hurt Christian theology, whatever. It's actually kind of enforcing the fact there's a creator and we're literally created in the image of a creator, literally. And that's kind of what life really is. It's like, Think about it's like a weird 3D plus time temporal sensory experience for a higher dimensional sentience. You're here to experience time in this weird linear fashion and to experience yourself divorced from yourself to gain knowledge and to report back is maybe what life is. And that's just kind of my own personal theology uh, as a summation of just – uh, during COVID, I was really bored, yeah. and, and, and that's what uh, I was Real looking work. at. <laughs> Brian, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, that, yeah, this reminds me of the fact that South Park has gotten everything right forever. And there was an episode, I'd, I'll, I'll never forget it, about 20 years ago, but they're all sitting in front of the pearly gates, and, and I, I don't know who it is, Gabriel's out there, and they're going, is there a what TV on in the background, answer? Mike? Was it Christianity, Brian? Hinduism, whatever. And they go, no, the Mormons. The Mormons were right. <laughs> and so and, and so when I heard this, it just uh, harkened me back to that. And, and, and I kind of laughed. But um, aside from that point, a very interesting thought that we are all children of something. I mean, uh, the, the, this could be born out of any religion for that matter. I think it's a fascinating point. Yeah, one of the interesting things, I'm not sure if I brought it up earlier today, I know I talked about this before the show, one of the things that was near the end of the interview from uh, Joe Rogan was that um, the reality of what we're dealing with, the reality and the vastness of the universe takes all of our religions and throws them out the window for the matter of none of them take into account the vastness of the universe. We're just in one little speck of dust in a galaxy, and there are trillion billions and billions of galaxies out that are out there in our universe of which there might be multiple universes so it just we just have to have our mind open to a much larger spectrum of things that potentially what's out there ollie your hand is up my friend Yes, I don't know if this is the right time, but um, uh, maybe for another episode. Maybe, as well. but, but okay. If you want to hold on that for a second, Peter, do you have a comment for what we were just talking about? I just want to agree with you completely that any religion would be completely unprepared and inept at discussing the entire vastness of the universe. That they would do their best. They would do the best they could. But in order to know the vastness and the intricacies of this universe and possibly multiple others and the entire state of existence that we're in, it's too much to expect that any religion should be able to do that. And if people think their religion does do that, I think that, that might be where we've got the disconnect coming in there. Uh, there's the idea that you can comprehend the entire universe out of any single religion. Uh, it's just not there. And uh, so thinking about these things is not really in conflict with the religion as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're in kind of two different lanes, and they can absolutely coexist together. And any other intelligences or forms of life or forms of existence beyond what we can comprehend are by definition beyond what we can comprehend. And it doesn't mean we shouldn't be looking forward to that and trying to explore that. Absolutely. Brian, you had your hand up, my friend. Yeah, I'm sorry, I took it down, but I, I, I just, I just want to say that that the main, the main takeaway from the Grush interview that I get is that you've got this young man, and and now he's older, but he he did this based on his consciousness that hey, that this needs to be out there for humanity, that we need to know, good or bad, we need to know, and so. Uh, 
in my opinion, he should be heralded as a hero, not only for his uh, his a service to his country and in Afghanistan and everything else, but for making this brave decision. Absolutely amazing. And we wouldn't be quite where we're at because of him. Yeah, there's been other people along the way, but this this uh, gentleman deserves a round of applause and, 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 and really heroic, in my opinion, Yeah, what he's been doing. Absolutely. Now, just to bring back a little reminder, coming to us from Brian Bender, over at uh, uh, over at the War Zone, he's a writer over there on a regular basis. Uh oh, let me get to this one here. Oh, not that one. Let me try and get. Uh, here we go. What did Brian Bender ba- say back on November second? I'm inclined to believe Kirkpatrick, Grush's credibility or at least his claim is crumbling, but I wouldn't be so sure anything is documented. How firm, formal were these invites, or was it just come and see us talking about? that Grush said many times to Kirkpatrick. I haven't received, actually, response to Kirkpatrick saying, yes, we reached out to him many times, and Grush said, not one email, not one phone call. Who do you believe, audience? Do you believe Grush, or do you believe Kirkpatrick? And why Brian Bender from the war zone is sticking up for uh, uh, Kirkpatrick at that time, I had a higher regard for that guy. Ali, your hand is up, my friend. Yeah, I was talking about, yeah, he's a real hero. I really want to uh, <laughs> underline that. And uh, also, there's this Brian Bandroy, what, what was his name? Uh, you know, the enemies are showing themselves now, who they are working for. That's very good. Just observe and put them on a list so you know who you can't trust. Uh, but what really scares uh, me, you know, we, we talk about the media. We know they are they are manipula- manipulating us, but we can find them out. We can find the truth today. But what really, really scares me uh, with these uh, extraterrestrial uh, <laughs> species is that they can plant pictures and messages in our heads. And for me, it's the kind of, okay, maybe it's possible... And we have a lot of um, experiences as well, that's a fact. But for me, I, di- I haven't understood, well, how, how do they do that? How is it possible? And I got a very, very important uh, clue. Uh, a short, um, is a YouTube interview with some of the te- technicians of the high tech companies. And he's talking about EEG, we can measure EEG, when you take uh, have receivers planted on your head, but he claims that you can do that from the from a distance as well. And I think if you have enough data on the think processes and the electrical waves that it creates, if you have an uh, intelligent uh, an AI who gets hold of that information and analyzes it between different persons. Now we don't know. We know the the electric currents that um, occur when we are thinking, but we cannot read the content of it. But if you can do this from a distance with already existing technology, well, then the step is not so far to even to analyze the uh, the, the, the content of the information in those uh, brain waves. So I think we have gone much, much further in this process uh, and science and technique that I didn't know about. So that makes it uh, very realistic. Okay, of course, if you can read the electrical signals and know the content and and know how they work, of course you can send uh, the same messages you want because you can create those brain waves like the Havana syndrome, um, but in another more, more sophisticated uh, version. Through consciousness without the use of microwaves, in other words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, for me. So uh, that's just what I say. I think it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, absolutely. Tomorrow I have to get up at 6 a.m., to uh, actually 5 a.m. to head in the office to get there by 6. Now at that code, I want to go ahead and uh, ask the back panels or anything else we haven't covered here yet tonight, guys. I think we've had a great show so far. Oh, one hell of a show. I think we're good tonight, Thomas. All right. On that note, I want to thank everybody for coming out. What a great show tonight for Disclosure Strength. Remember, if you haven't, give us a thumbs up. 
Give us a thumbs up. If not a thumbs down, we'll take one or the other. And if you haven't subscribed yet, before you leave, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button. You're the only way we're going to get to 8,000 subs on that note. I want to thank everybody for coming out here to this episode of Disclosure tonight. More importantly, I want to thank everybody for your super chats tonight, including uh, Neil Carr, Frat Frank, Frat Frank, Eli McGinnis, Eli McGinnis again, Magellan, Fat Frank again, Led Dave, Ali Alvian, and Wildcat Mahone. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your wonderful super chat. But it's not just about the super chats. It's about the people who have been in the chat all night tonight. Holy cow. I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. And that includes, let me go ahead and take a look at the participants we have out there right now. Let me go ahead and see who is the participants in the chat right now. Let's go ahead and do this. And reverse alphabetical order. Who am I thanking? Let me go ahead and change off the music here and get to that one. All right. I want to thank the Mac Geek, the old Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy, the Novus Wanderer. Simeon Hain is here. Good to see you, Simeon. Long time no see. Shermanator Osborne, uh, Shelly Montgomery, Resonate, Pete Liebel, Peggy with Crockett and Tubbs, Paul DeMond. Neil Morgan, Nathan Forrest, Matt Feinberg, Marcus Mandel, last of the finest. Good to see you, my friend. Kathy, Jimmy McKillops, Cell Phone Cinema, Jim Chambers. Uh, good to see you, Jim. Long time no see. Um, J-Cat, Jason Brown, George Sanqui, Gene Splice, Firefly, Evan B., Eric Roth, and the Gurus, Eli McGinnis, EBEA, Dirk Ridley, uh, Blake McCreary, Bill H., B. E. S. S. Uh, and Arrows Andy, Amiga Rules, and Alexi. Good to see you, Alexi. No, Novitsky. No long time no see. And who else do we have out there? It's not just about the people in the chat. It's also about our friends in the back that have helped make this show the special thing that it is today. On that note, I need to go and click the button over here to get this up. Make sure it's not too loud, which it isn't. I, on that note, I want to thank everyone in the back for coming out today. That includes Brian Pemble. Thanks for coming out today, Brian. Absolutely. Thank you. Great show. And what a day for Disclosure. This show is called Disclosure Tonight. And Grush just put it on there on Rogan in front of millions of people. Great day, huh? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Also, Michael Suckloff. Thank you for coming out today, Michael. You're welcome, Thomas. It's been a good show today. Well, Thanks for coming. Breaking yep. news. Absolutely. Thanks for coming out today, Nick. Also want to thank Nunya Business. Thanks for coming in today, Susan. What an awesome show, Thomas. Bloody awesome. You always bring it to the damn table, don't you? Thank you very much. Also want to thank Ali Alvian all the way from Sweden. Thanks for coming in today, Ali. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'm so pleased to hear that there are other Swedes now who is um, uh, watching this channel because this is really the spare edge of disclosure. Fantastic job, Thomas. Thank you very much, and thank you all of you for your contributions. Thank you very much. Also, Peter Panda, thanks for stopping by today, Peter. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, this is great that we're getting this information out there from Grush, uh, because, you know, 90% of the information that we hear in UFO land is nothing more than William Shatner moon pie crystals from wonderful little cows. So, you know, we'll just have to look at the good information and sort those few few pieces of good information from the 90% of complete bullshit out there. There you go, my friend. That's right. Send your cow pies to William Shatner now. <laughs> also want to thank Hollywood Herald, also known as Reality Check, for coming out today. No problem, Thomas. Always good show, man. Tonight was exceptional. Thanks, Mike, for all that uh, information you gave us tonight, man. It's really invaluable. Oh, you're quite welcome, yeah. Harold. That's what Thomas and I do. It's worthwhile. Yeah. I also want to thank Tia Lorraine. Thanks for coming in today, Tia. Matt wraps us back. The Mike Disclosure. Mike, Mike, Mike. Thanks for coming in today, my friend. Oh, it's one hell of a day for Disclosure. Anytime Grush speaks the truth and that kind of a scale to the public... It's worthwhile. And that being said, I put that post up on Twitter during the show. It's went viral and it's still going up. So this, we're getting the word out. 
It's very good. Plus, we may get some more people to join us here on Disclosure tonight. There you so, go, my friend. And we usually say good. at the end of every one of our broadcasts, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. But go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. See you soon. Y'all come back now. Here.